So hi, my name is Kevin Modest. I'm with the California Brain Tumor Association, but actually collaborate with 10 other groups. Uh, one of the groups is emfscientist.org, emfscientist.org. That's 220 doctors and scientists from 39 countries who have looked at health effects from wireless radiation. And from their work and the work of others, we can clearly say that wireless radiation can cause cancer, neurological problems, immune system disorders, and reproductive harm. Clearly, uh, our scientists, along with the other groups I work with, which are composed of people who are developing uh, wireless health effects um, from their various sources. For instance, people developing brain tumors from their cell phone and the radiation emits. Uh, people developing neurological symptoms from the Wi-Fi, from school Wi-Fi. People developing neurological and cancerous health effects from simple smart meters. Smart meters being little wireless meters that are put on people's homes so that the people don't have to come by and read the meter themselves manually. So regardless of the source, and cell towers are the most powerful source of wireless radiation emissions, um, regardless of the source, the health effects can be the same. So what brings me here today is the rollout of 5G technology. And people need to understand that 5G technology is very different from 2G, 3G, and 4G that preceded it. And that is because the wireless radiation is using a higher frequency. Our current wireless technology uses about 1 gigahertz to 4 gigahertz. Um, this new 5G technology is ultra high frequency, ultra high intensity, and it's 24 gigahertz to 90 gigahertz. To put this in some type of perspective, 90 gigahertz is 90 billion electromagnetic waves per second hitting your body. We know people are already getting sick from the lower frequencies, and we expect, that is our scientists expect, that these higher, ultra-high frequency uh, microwaves are going to bring people to disease quicker and in a more intense form. The other problem with 5G technology is these microwaves are very short, so our old microwaves were about two and a half to three feet long. These are now about an inch to half an inch long and they don't travel very well. So they're gonna to have to put a little cell tower transmitter in front of about every two to 10 homes. Now this is a big problem because we know that cancer rates around regular cell towers are about three or four times what they normally should be. We also know that there's neurological symptoms that increase as you get closer and closer to a cell tower. Now these new transmitters are gonna be placed close to people's homes um, it's going to be continuous exposure as with other cell towers, but it'll be emitting a much more higher frequency, high intensity wireless radiation. So we have a tremendous problem that's happening and people need to understand that the FCC is pushing this technology nationwide. What's also important for people to understand is the FCC is dominated by the wireless industry itself. And the FCC are the people that are given uh, the responsibility and privilege of regulating wireless radiation human exposure standards. So unfortunately, the FCC, whose chairman, who just left and they changed with every administration, was the former main lobbyist and the former president of the wireless trade organization, CTIA. So the, the agency that's been given the responsibility and privilege of maintaining and setting our human exposure standards for wireless radiation, and people call this radio frequency radiation, or EMF, electromagnetic field radiation, they all mean the same thing, um, are the people who profit and benefit from the proliferation of wireless technology and the transmitters that, that uh, empower it. So we have a huge conflict of interest at the top, and this is what really drives and creates the problem from the beginning. Uh, actually, the EPA used to look at this, uh, this area, had their own scientists assigned to studying it, and showed just what we're seeing, uh, that wireless radiation can increase cancer, neurological problems, uh, reproductive harm, and immune system problems. They actually proposed a standard that was thermal and non-thermal. What we have now is an FCC that has set a thermal standard. The problem with that is it misses what happens non-thermally or subthermally. And what our scientists can show and prove 
is that wireless radiation can damage cells and damage our DNA leading to cancer and other serious pathologies below thermal. So we have the FCC setting a standard that really avoids the problem. This is a big problem because whenever they roll out a new wireless technology, whenever they're questioned about the safety of it, and people need to understand there are more than 10,000 studies showing that wireless radiation is certainly harmful, the agency, whether it's a school or it's a local municipality or if it's a state government, will point to the FCC guidelines and simply say, well, what we're doing is well within or below the FCC guidelines. But people need to understand these guidelines only take into account thermal or acute burning, and so they really are frankly relatively useless in terms of protecting the public health. People also need to understand that the California Medical Association passed a resolution in the end of 2014 stating just this, that uh, in the resolution that our safety standards are inadequate to protect public health and that there are numerous peer-reviewed studies showing that wireless radiation can damage DNA, cause single and double strand DNA breaks, and lead to a host of diseases including cognitive problems, uh, brain cancer, um, ADHD, um, and fertility issues. Um, so we have now a, a consensus among cellular biologists that we have the mechanism um, for how this technology creates problems. And I actually want to read uh, the title of this because I want people to be able to look it up themselves and see that we have a significant problem. Um, and the title of it, of this study, is Oxidative Mechanisms of Biological Activity of Low Intensity Radio Frequency Radiation. In this study of studies, they looked at a hundred studies, and of these hundred studies, 93 of them were in agreement that wireless radiation can, below thermal, damage DNA, leading to a host of serious pathologies, including cancer, uh, and neurological problems. So we now have the mechanism. The industry claims that these health effects don't exist and that's really ridiculous because we're now at the point where we have a consensus regarding the mechanism. Not just that the health effects exist but we understand how they exist. And there's probably multiple mo mechanisms considering this wireless radiation affects different systems of our body. So what do we need for people to do. We need people to understand that there's a problem and educate themselves because the agencies that are supposed to be warning us, that are supposed to be educating us, like the FCC, have been are not doing that or have been taken out or taken out of the position of doing so. So two websites you can look at. One website is bioinitiative.org, bioinitiative.org. This is uh, a website that has brought together the studies and reviewed 3,600 studies looking at various health effects, different systems of the body. Um, and people can see for themselves the evidence that's there. And they brought them together and these are peer-reviewed studies and people can find them themselves. Another website is saferemr.com, saferemr.com dot com out of UC Berkeley's School of Public Health. Uh, they look at the research worldwide and it's scientist Joel Moskowitz who's reviewed the science and uh, updates people on the latest information worldwide. Um, these are two good resources for understanding what's happening and people need to understand that the industry is investing millions and billions of dollars in hiding health effects, in funding their own studies, in putting the experts that they believe in in positions of power and infiltrating the agencies that are supposed to protect public health to um, state that there is no issue regarding health effects when there certainly is. There's, there's a national bill that is pushing this 5G technology and the small cell transmitters in front of homes that it's going to require. It's the Mobile Now Act. It's S19 the Mobile Now Act, S19. It's currently in the Senate, and I strongly encourage people to contact their senator and ask their senator to put a hold on S19. 
If you put a hold on this bill, it won't be able to be heard by the Senate and therefore won't be able to be passed. But any one senator can put this bill on hold. You put a bill on hold when you need more information and certainly the senators do not have adequate information regarding non-thermal or sub-thermal biological effects from wireless radiation or radio frequency radiation. Now you don't have to stop with your senator. I encourage you to contact every senator um, and tell them and explain to them that you want this bill stopped, that it's not healthy to put these transmitters near your home, and that it violates our basic civil rights. It violates our rights to maintain the safety and security of our home. It violates our rights to protect our family. It violates our basic human right to live healthy and safely in our own homes. Um, it also violates uh, the right of the state and local governments to be able to regulate and protect the health and safety of their residents. Um, so I encourage people to contact their senators and contact every senator and ask them to put a hold on S-19, which is the Mobile Now Act, which is going to facilitate these small cell transmitters being put in front of people's homes exempt from health, safety, and environmental review. Exempt. The other bill in the Senate that we want to look at is S-88. That's uh, S-88. That's the Digit Act. Now the Digit Act is going to look at what barriers or obstacles there are on the state, local, and federal level to rolling out these wireless transmitters and putting them in front of your home. So it's, it's, a, less, uh, it's a less scary and problematic bill, but it needs to be stopped along with S-19. So please call your senators about both bills, but the priority would be the Mobile Now Act. People also need to understand that the wireless industry, led by CTIA, the wireless uh, lobby group for the industry, is pushing state measures also. So if the federal me measure is not successful, they're going to have state measures that will achieve the same aims. Most of these bills are being done under the name of WTF. And one lady said, who's sick from wireless radiation, WTF says it all. Anyway, it stands for Wireless Transmitters Facilities Bill. And there's different versions of this. Um, but basically, this one bill has been kind of replicated in many of the states. And really, almost all of the states are considering bills like this. I can read off the names of states that are considering bills, but really, it's, it's frankly almost all the states. So you can assume that there's a bill in your state. New York is interesting because they have two bills. They don't have WTF, but they have two bills people should be aware of. Senate um, S2042, S2042, which is the Wireless Broadband um, Eligible Facilities Permit Act. And what this does is it basically makes it so that if there is a current uh, structure that these uh, transmitters are going to go in the structure exempt from a environmental review. They also set um, timelines for when these need to be approved so they can't, the permit process can't be dragged out. There also is something that's moving through, that's moving through New York people need to be aware of. It's 6NYCRR Part 617. It's a rulemaking and the rulemaking is through the New York State Department of environmental conservation which is kind of ridiculous because this is wireless radiation represents the greatest environmental health and safety issue of our time and the fact that very few people are talking about it is quite sad and it also speaks to the power of the industry to hide health effects regardless of the amount of science that's out there um, so really people need to take action to protect themselves because unfortunately the FCC is actually promoting and violating people's basic civil rights. And the EPA that used to be involved had proposed a thermal and non-thermal standard, um, were prevented by Congress to continue looking at this and were defunded when it was critically important in 1995. People need to also understand that the Telecom Act was passed in 1996, which gave uh, the FCC the power to regulate uh, the environmental health and safety effects from wireless radiation. People also need to understand in 19, the 1996 Telecom Act there was a section, section 704, 
And this was a very important section because it banned local and state governments from setting their own environmental standards for wireless uh, radiation and human exposure. But unfortunately, this section of the bill, um, which was passed under the Clinton administration, has been used in the courts to expand um, the exemption from local and state governments to the point that at this time and for the past many years, local and state governments have been banned from looking at health and safety when considering the placement of cell towers. This is how they built out the entire network. And this is how they're going to be placing these small cell transmitters in front of your homes, exempt from health, safety, and environmental review. This is un-American. This is undemocratic. This is unjust. This re represents a grave injustice. And Section 704 of the 1996 Telecommunications Act needs to be overturned without question. It violates our most basic rights and frankly, it keeps the healthy conversation about health effects from happening. The other thing that 1996 Telecom Act does in Section 704 is keeps people who are getting sick around these cell transmitters from suing. This provides absolutely no incentive to the industry to make changes um, to make this technology safer. People need to understand, we can make wireless radiation that is emitted by these transmitters safer. How can we do that? Well, first, we can use wired connections to connect to the internet, to connect your laptop to the wall, which gets the internet, to use wired headsets with cell phones, um, to use wired connections uh, around children, which has been recommended um, by European Parliament Resolution 1815, and people can look it up because that's what we should be doing, using wired connections that don't use wireless and therefore don't utilize and expose people to wireless radiation microwaves in combination with wireless to maximize the benefits of wireless and the benefits of it are clear in terms of convenience while minimizing the biological health effects. This is the solution, a combination of wired connections with wireless. Unfortunately, the industry has been pushing and the FCC has voted to allow local utilities to pull up landlines when there's a wireless connection available. That's forcing people over to use more wireless and maximizing our exposure instead of minimizing it by using wired in combination with wireless. What else can we do to make it safe? We can look and test these frequencies before we roll them out before we expose our population to them for biological effects. We can test the, not just the frequencies, but the modulations um, and um, the pulsing and find frequencies that are less harmful to the body and less bioactive. We believe that we can find frequencies that can carry data that can also, at a minimum, activate the body or might even be healthier for the body but we're not looking at the frequencies. We're not testing them before we release them. The industry has no motivation and incentive to make sure this technology is safe before they roll it out. They have complete control of the mechanism uh, of looking at this by controlling the FCC. People need to understand the FCC commission is made up of wireless industry insiders, wireless entrepreneurs, uh, a Verizon attorney, the previous president uh, of the wireless trade organization, and this has been happening for the last two decades. This conflict of interest to the point of criminality cannot continue. This is the foundation of this violation of our basic rights. And when people contact their senators, uh, whether they're on state, federal, or local representatives, we need to demand that the FCC, that the EPA, or the NIH or another agency that's qualified to look at biological health effects assume the responsibility. People also need to understand the FCC has no one with a biological background to say this technology is safe, yet they guarantee you that it is, and they're putting these wireless transmitters in your children's schools, near your children's homes with 5G, under the guise that the FCC says it's safe when they have no one qualified to say so. This is absurd. This is wrong. We need to do something about it. Absolutely. 
So first, please contact your U.S. Senators about the Mobile Now Act, S-19, and the Digit Act, S-88. Then contact your state senators and make it very clear that you do not want bills passed that will facilitate these small cell antennas in your neighborhood and they're already in your state. Most states have a bill pending right now. People need to act. People need to demand that they stop exposing people to wireless radiation unnecessarily. In terms of your personal use, what can you do to protect yourself? Well, if you use a cell phone, you can use a wired headset that keeps the cell phone or the microwave transmitter away from your head. Some basic facts about wireless transmitters, they are microwave transmitters, two-way microwave transmitters. So we want to use a wired headset that keeps that source of the radiation and those microwaves away from our head. If you hold a phone to your head, you are literally microwave radiating your head. And when you put it that way and you ask people, is it a good idea or not to hold one against your head? Most people say, well, when you put it that way, actually no. The industry's done an amazing job separating the benefits of this technology from how it works. What else can you do to protect yourself? Well, when you're using a, a laptop or a computer connected to the wall using a wired connection, a wired Ethernet connection, turn off the wireless in your computer, because that's a transmitter too, and use wired connections for a keyboard and mouse to keep yourself away from the computer itself, because the computer itself because it's an electromagnetic um, instrument, has an electromagnetic field around it, but that field drops off at about 8 or 10 inches, so you want to be back off of your computer. The problem with wireless is it has the same issue as power lines, which have long been shown to increase leukemia in children when you're close to them, but it has an electromagnetic field around it, so you want to, but it drops off about 8 to 10 inches. The problem with wireless is it takes that same kind of electromagnetic field and distributes it into the environment so you can't get away from it. This is the basic problem with Wi-Fi and other wireless transmitters. So connecting your computer with a wired Ethernet cord. That's something you can do. Do not sleep with a cell phone next to your head because it pings to the tower about every 30 seconds, kind of checking in, making sure it's ready for a call. And you don't want those transmissions. Decreases in melatonin have been shown related to electromagnetic fields for decades and so we know it, it affects sleep and that's very important because melatonin is a very strong antioxidant and affects in, and plays a part in terms of the fight against cancer. So we don't want um, or your cell phone next to your bed turned on. One good thing for people to know is if you turn your phone on airplane mode it still works as an alarm clock so that's good to know. The other thing in your home is portable phones. So portable cordless phones have the similar issue as cell phones. That is when you hold the, the, the headset to your head, it's transmitting through microwaves and those microwaves can cause brain cancer. So we want to throw those portable phones away and use phones with wired connections, a cord connecting to the wall and then a cord connecting from the base to the headset and just put these phones in several of your rooms. They won't run out of power. Your transmission will be much clearer um, and you'll be keeping yourself safe from unnecessarily wireless transmissions. What's very important about these portable base stations for these portable phones is they transmit all the time, whether you're on the phone or not. They seem to use a frequency that's very disturbing to the body and so they're an important thing to eliminate in your environment and they're a very easy thing to eliminate from your environment. Other sources of continuous exposure we're worried about. Wi-Fi in your home um, works at a frequency of 2.45 gigahertz. So people can understand this, 2.45 gigahertz is 2 billion waves per second hitting your body. So it's much higher f frequency than what's natural. You know, your body has a current to itself. Your heart has a current, electrical current. Your brain has electrical current. We're running at about, you know, 8 hertz, 8 to 10 hertz. So that's 8 waves per second. And your Wi-Fi is at 2 billion waves per second. So you can see how it's billions of times more microwaves than we're used to in the natural environment. Um, so you can see where there's a problem. So for Wi-Fi, it's very good to turn it off at night so you can sleep clean of these microwaves. 
but what we'd even prefer more is that you turn off the wireless in your router, plug in the back a cord, an Ethernet cord, and run that cord as your internet to your computers and to other people's computers. If you don't feel comfortable doing it, you can ask an electrician. It's quite easy for them to do, and it's quite inexpensive to do, and you can make your home and your children's home much safer from wireless microwaves. So that's an easy thing to do also. But it also points out the problem with this new 5G technology because uh, you're putting in front of your home a transmitter that's going to be emitting at 24 gigahertz to 90 gigahertz and so that is 24 billion waves per second up to 90 billion waves per second much much more dense than regular Wi-Fi and so our scientists feel and what studies have shown is that it kind of bangs up your cells more um, and makes your cells close down. So from a biological point of view, the way to understand this is with all these waves coming through your body, your cells, which are electromagnetic, if you remember from biology class, you got a positive and you have a negative in your cells. These cells kind of try to defend themselves and they close up in defense and in doing so, you have a buildup of free radical and you have lots of oxidative stress on the cells and these cells over time create DNA damage and that DNA damage can lead to cancer and other problems. So that's how it works from a cellular point of view. The other thing is when your cells close up in defense it can interfere with intercellular communication and that's why you can see why it would affect uh, people's neurology. Also see why it would affect people's immune system disorders because they work through communication and attack. So it also explains symptoms that people who are electrosensitive and electrosensitive is not really, is a term the industry has given people who have developed neurological problems from wireless radiation. A more accurate term and an earlier term that was developed decades ago is microwave sickness or microwave syndrome. And the first people to report this were, were Navy men who were being affected by the, wire, the microwaves from radar. People need to understand that we've had microwaves for years and we've had biological evidence of biological health effects for years. Um, that we had radar, we had UHF TV, and we had two-way radios that people used. And two-way radio operators were some of the first people who were showing an increase in cancer rates. So we had this evidence before we had commercialized wireless in terms of cell phones and Wi-Fi. Um, and the Navy knew about this uh, for a long time and they put out their own reports. The Navy Medical Research Institute put out their own reports. People can contact me if they want more information and studies at email weanow7 at gmail.com. weanow, the number 7, at gmail.com and I'm happy to share these reports. But if you look at the Bioinitiative report or bioinitiative.org, they review many of these studies and they have links to other links that can lead you to this. So that's a wonderful resource to begin with. Um, so we were talking about you know, the electrosensitivity and people developing these neurological effects. Um, and some of the common symptoms so people can understand is tingling in your hands. When you're holding a cell phone, a lot of people have tingling in their hands. Now the industry says there is no biological effect, so your hands really shouldn't tingle, but people are getting tingling up their hands, and commonly they get headaches after using their phone for a long period. These are biological effects that people can vouch for themselves, and they only happen when they're using the cell phone, so the association between the source and the symptoms is pretty obvious. Um, people also re report sometimes vertigo, dizziness um, from wireless sources, um, nausea, um, sometimes a feeling of confusion or mental fog, they just can't seem to recall things as well. Memory impairment, um, these are common. And they're not being reported by old people, they're actually being reported by a lot of young people because young people unfortunately are using a lot of wireless technology right now. People need to understand that brain tumors and brain cancer is now the number one disease for children 15 to 19. And from the age 15 to 29, the three most common diseases now are brain cancer, thyroid cancer, and testes cancer. And they all could be associated with wireless radiation exposure. How do you mean? Well, when a child holds a cell phone to their head, their brain gets a lot of microwave radiation through it. 
but also their neck gets a lot of exposure because the phone is so large. So that would explain the increase in thyroid cancer. And then um, the boys are putting their cell phone in their front pocket. And the, and the testes are very sensitive to being microwaved, as you can imagine. And again, these phones are pinging to the towers about every 30 seconds. It's also the reason we don't want women carrying the cell phones inside their bras, because uh, doctors are reporting uh, very young women developing tumors in the exact location of the transmitter from their cell phone. Um, so this is a very serious issue. We are basically microwave radiating our children. The same issue um, comes up in terms of Wi-Fi in the schools. Schools are now one of the most dangerous places in the country given the number of wireless, two-way wireless transmitters that we have in each classroom. I know in Los Angeles they're putting 20 to 40 microwave transmitters in one room. Um, they're putting two or three wireless routers uh, on each ceiling and each classroom is located next to another classroom that has the same arrangement and oftentimes there's a classroom below that classroom and above that classroom so we are thoroughly microwave radiating our children and our teachers and these children and oftentimes pregnant teachers are some of our most vulnerable of our population so we are highly exposing our most vulnerable children from very early on, starting in kindergarten, all the way through the lifespan and as they develop neurologically. We know children are more sensitive, about three or four times more sensitive to all environmental hazards because their neurology is more sensitive and they're developing. In the case of wireless cell phones, we know children's brains are thinner and the wireless microwaves pass farther through the head and the American Academy of Pediatrics has said just this and our safety guidelines and people need to understand our safety guidelines set by the FCC are not safety standards safety standards would have to be backed up by research very rigorous research that we have safety guidelines and that we are relying on these inadequate thermally based safety guidelines to ensure the safety of, a tech, of this wireless technology that we know has thousands of studies showing harmful effects. This is an egregious injustice and it really needs to be stopped. So what to keep yourself safer in your home? Let's get back to that. Smart meters, little wireless smart meters that have been put on many people's homes so that people don't, a power company doesn't have to come to your house and read your meter, it'll transmit um, to, the, to the company several times a day. Um, many people have reported neurological effects from this and there could be lots of explanations for this but again they don't test the frequencies. One theory is that while the transmitter only transmits a couple times a day it pings to other transmitters many times you know uh, many times a minute to check in which all wireless devices do and the other issue um, is they may use a beacon frequency that's very similar to our frequency of our bodies, therefore causing neurological problems. Because if you know anything about basic uh, electronics is that if you have two transmitters transmitting on similar frequencies, you can get interference. And while these transmitters are transmitting on a frequency similar to ours, we're developing interference or not neurological effects. People need to understand that half the states have opt-outs for smart wireless smart meters. Half the states. They have these opt-outs because people were fine and healthy, oftentimes young women, and then all of a sudden they develop neurological effects, headaches, insomnia, um, 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 uh, confusion, dizziness in their own homes, and they didn't know what was going on, and they didn't know what changed, but a lot of people because of awareness on the internet, were able to associate their symptoms with the installment of these new wireless smart meters. And then they demanded, they went to their local utilities and demanded they take these transmitters off of their homes because they were literally being driven out of their own homes. So now we have half the states with opt-outs for wireless smart meters. That is human evidence that wireless radiation, even very low power transmitters, can develop neurological effects amongst our population. This is critically important because the 5G rollout is basically smart meters on steroids. 
That is, we again have a wireless transmitter close to people's homes, but unlike the smart meters, this is going to be transmitting continuously. And if, if cell phones, which have been found to triple people's uh, risk of developing a brain tumor with just half an hour of use, and Europe's Interphone study found that as one of their findings, if cell phones to the head for just half an hour a day can triple your risk of a brain tumor, imagine living, right, living with a cell, small cell tower transmitter in front of your home communicating with hundreds of thousands of cell phones and that you are in the field continuously, you can imagine the implications for cancer risk, neurological effects, immune system problems, and reproductive harm. This is a frankly scary technology they're rolling out and the fact that they are doing it exempt from health, safety, and environmental review shows that there is a problem. And people need to ask themselves one basic question. In the 1996 Telecom Act, in Section 704, why did they have to exempt these cell tower transmitters from environmental safety and health review and any consideration of health and safety if there were no health and safety problems? Why would you have to exempt them? The reality is there is and if they didn't have Section 704 of the 1996 Telecom Act, I could come to a zoning hearing near your home and literally bring a thousand studies showing why it's not a good idea to put cell towers near your children or families. This is the same issue with the small cell transmitters they'll be putting in front of your home with 5G technology. Except it's going to be higher frequency, it's going to be more continuous, and these wireless transmitters are going to be much closer to your home than normal cell towers are located. They're going to be as close as these wireless smart meters are placed, and we already know people get sick from that. We are playing with people's health without warning them about possible health effects, without their consent, and with these state measures like the wireless transmitter facilities bills and the Mobile Now Act, S19 and S88, the Digit Act, they are forcing these transmitters on you, your family, and your home, and it's time to take a stand. We have allowed this kind of violation for way too long people have developed neurological effects that have disabled them for far too long. People are unjustly being forced to develop cancer in their homes from cell towers far too long. It's time we take a stand. The rollout of 5G and the location of these transmitters near our homes and businesses is a gross violation of our basic rights. And people need to wake up need to stand up, they need to go, not just call or email, but go to their state representatives and demand that they be protected, go to Washington DC and talk with their senators and every other senator and congressman in the Congress and demand that they not expose and risk the health of your family with these wireless transmitters. If people and we need people who are already sick from neurological effects, cancerous effects, immune problem, system problems to contact us and write testimonials that we can bring to state and federal public officials and show them that there is already an epidemic problem related to wireless radiation. Email weanow7 at gmail.com and help us help us gather these type of testimonials. Also, if you're willing to meet with the public officials in your state, contact us and we will help facilitate your meeting them and taking action to protect your family. weanow7, the number 7, at gmail.com. We need your testimonials. We need your willingness to speak to public officials and stand up against this as a group. We're asking for your help. This is not going to change without you. We have a democratic system. 
a democratic representative system. It represents those who are involved. Our system is only as good as the people who participate in it. What I can tell you is the corporations are participating. They're hiring the lobbyists who are there in front of our officials, making their case, asking them to represent their interests, and the representatives are doing just that. They are providing funding. We need to provide campaign funding. They are insisting that they advocate for their rights. We need them to advocate for our rights. Um, they are getting in front of them and reminding them they need to do their duty as representatives. We need to do the same thing. Citizens need to take back their government. They need to stand up against these bills that are violating your rights and taking away your rights. And people need to understand, I have been to the Capitol, representatives are listening. I have been to the state capitals, representatives are listening. People are listening because we they know, as well as we know, that something is direly wrong. That brain tumors that used to be very rare are not rare anymore, but it's no surprise when you're microwave radiating your head up most of the day. Uh, these neurological effects for young people, people know something is up. This is not normal. It absolutely isn't. We are microwave radiating and these microwaves are very neurotoxic as well as carcinogenic and genotoxic. Um, all these immune system disorders for young women, these are not normal. The fibromyalgias, the other ones, it's basically your immune system going berserk, not knowing what to do, attacking itself. We need to rule out wireless radiation exposure when it comes to these immune system disorders. And fertility is down almost a third in industrialized countries. This is not an accident. Studies show very easily, if you measure a man's sperm and look at its activity and then you put a wireless laptop on his lap and for half an hour only and you measure that sperm again, you will see sperm death, you will see sperm mutation. We are damaging the fertility and DNA of our next generation. And as one scientist told me, you know, this isn't something we can say, oops, and go back on. Once you damage people's DNA and it's passed on, you have a permanent, permanent evolutionary problem. We are playing with the basic mechanisms of our, of our living. Our cells are electromagnetic. These waves are very powerful. They are very intense, only getting more intense with 5G. And we are affecting the basic way our cells operate, function, and communicate. Think about it. Let's put the common sense back into the conversation. We are electromagnetic beings. Put your finger in a socket and see if you conduct. <laughs> we certainly do. Your device picks up these microwaves, and so do you to some degree. And some people are very sensitive to these microwaves. We should be listening to these electrosensitive or people suffering from microwave sickness more accurately and realize that we are exposing ourselves to a very harmful agent. And while you might not be having symptoms yet, you may develop them because it's exposure over time. And while you may not be sensitive and developing symptoms like electrosensitive people, your cells are being affected. They are responding to these electromagnetic waves. You may not know it until unfortunately over time you develop cancer. So we should be listening to these electrosensitive people and understanding that they're like the canaries in the coal mine. They are warning us that we have a very serious problem, and we do. We are playing with the basic building blocks of our bodies, and we are playing with the basic ways our body communicates and functions, and we need to be very, very careful. Instead, we're being reckless. We are rolling out this 5G and just going to see what happens. Well, we already know what happens, and it's going to happen even worse with 5G technology. I'm going to refer people to a document, and I encourage you to look it up. It's called Birds, Bees, and Mankind. Birds, Bees, and Mankind. This is a document that shows not just that wireless radiation is affecting mankind, but it's affecting our environment and the animals that make up you know, our natural environment. That is the birds specifically and the bees. 
Why the birds and the bees? Because birds and bees navigate through electromagnetic waves. And the science is showing that the very intense man-made microwaves that we're adding to the environment are affecting and interrupting the navigation of the birds and the bees and their communication with one another. Um, and this document, written by seven leading German scientists, don't just discuss the possible problems, they refer to the scientific evidence of mechanisms of how this is affecting nature, how this is affecting our environment, how this is affecting mankind as being one of the living beings in our environment. So we are talking about one of the greatest environmental health and safety issues of our time and not only are we not talking about it, are we not funding research to look more carefully at this even though we have enough research to show there's a problem and to show that it's harming us um, and that the fact that we and to protect um, people who are getting sick not only are we not talking about it not funding uh, science to look more carefully at how to protect us um, we're certainly not doing anything to protect people we're actually spending millions and billions of federal money and government money to make the problem exponentially worse. We are moving in the exact wrong direction. We should be minimizing exposure while maximizing the benefits of wireless. Instead, we are maximizing exposure by exposing children young in school all the way up through the lifespan. We are now exposing people not just at work, but at home and in between home and work. And now we're exposing people with low frequency waves as well as high frequency waves on top of it. We are truly maximizing people's exposure to wireless radiation and we, we see and we can expect more health effects from it and the rollout of 5G is an egregious affront and that the worst possible form of this, this is bringing together groups like my group, the California Brain Tumor Association, other groups like Parents for Safe Technology that look at Wi-Fi in the schools, other groups like StopSmartMeters.org that look at health effects from smart meters, um, look at people who are being affected by this like groups like WeAreTheEvidence.org, um, groups like SaferEMR.com um, out of UC Berkeley School of Public Health that are looking at the research. Groups like emfscientists.org. All these groups are coming together <clears throat> along with other groups nationally and internationally to push back against this rollout of 5G. Because if you understand anything about wireless radiation health effects, you know this is a worst case scenario and people need to wake up, people need to act to protect themselves and their families and they need to hold their public officials responsible for recklessly exposing us to wireless radiation and continuing with a safety standard that's thermally based only that is not protective and exempting this, these transmitters from any kind of health safety and environmental or discretionary review that will protect people in their own homes. This must be done. Contact me if, if you can, are willing to write testimonials if you're already sick at WEA now, WEA now 7, the number 7 at gmail.com, WEA now 7 at gmail.com, um, so that you can take action and you can join others that are taking action too. So, um, what else can be done? Well, let's act. A lot of people are acting locally, um, thinking it's going to help. Unfortunately, this is an issue that the states are exempting local government from protecting you, so you need to act on a state level. The feds are acting to take the states out of uh, acting on this issue, so you need to really work on the federal level. A lot of people reach out to the local area. Um, I encourage you to reach to your state and really reach to the federal level where this is being pushed by the FCC demand that the EPA regulate this technology instead of the FCC. Um, demand that the 1996 Telecom Act and especially Section 704 be overturned. Demand um, that 
all of these transmitters go under a strict environmental safety and health review and also demand that the safety standard set by the FCC be revised strongly to encourage non-thermal as well as thermal standards. People need to understand Russia, even Russia has a thermal and non-thermal standard, that other countries have standards that are a hundred thousand times lower than ours. A hundred thousand times lower than ours. And if you look at bioinitiative.org and the conclusions they find, you'll see that they've concluded that biological health effects can happen even after a very short period, even three or four minutes of exposure to wireless technology for some people. They also show health effects um, billions of times at levels billions of times lower than our current safety standard. This should alarm people, but it's better to be informed and protect yourself by minimizing your exposure and hold your government officials responsible for not exposing you more than to continue ignorantly and unfortunately getting the bad news from your physician, which a lot of people are ending up having to do. So contact me at WEA now, the number seven, at gmail.com. We need your testimonials from every state showing we have an epidemic of neurological effects, cancerous effects, reproductive harm and immune system problems related to wireless radiation transmitter exposure. Contact us um, if you're willing to reach out and speak personally to your public representatives in your state and also on a federal level. We need your help. Um, if you're willing to provide resources, of course, we are facing one of the most powerful industries in the world. We need resources in terms of funding. We need resources in terms of assistance organizing others. We need resources in terms of computer help and technology assistance. Um, we need people who are simply willing to do some of the administrative and clerical work it takes to organize a massive group of people. We need your help. You can make a difference. This is not someone else's issue. Unfortunately, the wireless industry, by placing these transmitters in front of people's homes, by encouraging people to put these transmitters inside their homes, are making it your problem, your family's problem, and unfortunately a very serious health problem for many people who don't deserve these things to happen at all. This is issue of financial might over right. This is an issue of violating the most innocent in our population's basic rights. This is an issue of grave injustice, and we ask you to get involved, to make a difference, and each and every one of you can make a difference in your own way, and contact us, WEA now, the number seven, at gmail.com. Please, I ask you for your help. As a medical social worker, working with 200 scientists, this is a real problem. Real innocent people are getting sick and you can do something to change that and stop the rollout of 5G technology and the transmitters it uses to operate. People need to understand this is an issue of air pollution. That these microwaves are in the air and the challenge is you can't see, feel or hear it and that's a big problem and that's how they've gotten away with this really. But these microwaves in the air can cause health effects so it's a form of electro smog. And yes, people using wireless transmitters around you is a problem because you're being exposed. Of course, the closer you are to a transmitter, the worse it is. And having many, many people using devices is not a healthy environment. Using many, many devices inside of a subway that's a medical, medical, a metal container where the microwaves are bouncing around and reflecting is certainly not a healthy environment. Airplanes too. Having Wi-Fi in airplanes is a huge mistake. And the FCC is the ones who regulate and say it's okay, but clearly this is a big mistake. What could we do instead? We could have a transmitter on the outside of the airplane and we could have wired connections for people to plug their laptops in inside the airplane, which would be safer. Certainly having Wi-Fi inside the airplane is not safe. And having people using devices very close to each other is not safe. Now think about this. When the plane takes off, they tell you, turn off your cell phone so your phones don't interfere 
with the operation of the plane and crash your plane. So which one is it? You need to turn off your cell phone because it's a very powerful transmitter that can create tremendous amount of interference? Or is it totally harmless and innocent and not a problem at all? Which one is it? And if it's going to create interference with the operation of the airplane, what's it going to do in terms of interference in the operation of your electromagnetic body? So which one is it? I think the answer is kind of obvious. You can't have it both ways. If the FCC is going to say you have to turn off your phone um, because it's, it could possibly damage the airplane, it obviously would have impact on the person sitting next to you and especially with so many people using devices inside. So that's an excellent question. The same issue with Wi-Fi in the schools. We should use wired connections to the computers. It's a simple solution. They're faster, they're more secure in terms of cyber security. Um, they need to be updated less than wireless transmitter routers um, so they can be cheaper in the long run. And they don't expose children to microwave radiation unnecessarily. It's a simple solution but the uh, districts are not being required by the public to do so and that's a big problem. One solution would be to leave this country and go to a safer milieu? Yeah, I mean people with 5G are certainly thinking about leaving this country and that's, that's sad. Um, but France has been very open about talking about wireless radiation health effects. They've passed bills that uh, force uh, providers to show where their transmitters are. So if someone's electrosensitive, they can know where the transmitters are to avoid them. Um, they've made restrictions on Wi-Fi in the classroom, and that is they've banned it from nursery school, and they force uh, elementary schools to turn it off when they're not using it, which is common, a common sense minimization uh, measure. Um, Israel, in Haifa, one of their most high-tech cities, is now, um, the mayor there has ordered uh, the removal of Wi-Fi from the schools and inst installation of wired connections. Um, and like I referred to before, um, Resolution 1815 really articulates just what we've said, that this is an issue uh, equivalent to the issue of tobacco and asbestos in that we knew there was problems going on and we ignored them until it became a bigger problem. But um, the correlation with tobacco is an interesting one. It's actually, I believe, much worse than tobacco. Because if you're smoking a cigarette, you know, the person on the other side of the wall won't be affected. But with wireless, those microwaves go right through the wall and the person on the other side is affected. And the other thing with cigarette smoke, on average, it takes about 30 years for tumor growth. What the studies are showing with cell phones and brain tumors is it takes about 10 years. Um, so you're talking about a, an agent three times as carcinogenic um, as cigarette smoke and uh, we're exposing people to it very efficiently and effectively. Um, and the other issue, and, and what this resolution also does, it says the electrosensitivity is real and that people need to be accommodated and they need to be given places they can live and work um, free of wireless radiation. Um, they also say that with children, very specifically, that wired connections should be preferred over wireless to minimize their exposure, especially in schools. They say that in this resolution. So they say a lot of the things um, that we're saying, and they've done it very formally. This is not a fringe organization. This is um, the European Council of Europe. This is the Council of Europe. So um, what they also say is that we should look at our safety standards and look at these non-thermal um, biological effects as well as this thermal. Um, they say that in the resolution. So they've said much of what we've said um, and they've done it very formally and this is a mainstream group um, and some countries have taken it to heart in Europe and taken measures to protect their population um, and some have less so. Um, but the reality is the science is there, the evidence is there it's a matter of us acting. We should take this resolution 1815 and act on it. You know, the Russian constitution is actually more democratic than the US constitution, but we actually act and protect, you know, based on our constitution. We could do the same thing for resolution 1815. We could actually take it and act on it and protect our population using it. Um, so we have a template for what needs to be done. It's already out there. And it's not a fringe group. Um, unfortunately, the industry's had a very, you know, great success in marginalizing this issue. Um, but it's not a marginal issue. We're 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 looking at uh, research that's showing 10% of the population being electrosensitive. 
to the point of it really affecting their functioning. And 30% of people having symptoms but not realizing it's associated with wireless technology. So we're talking about a very uh, large portion of our population being affected. Could it be more than half the population? We're already at that point. So as a group, we've already, we're already used wireless technology for 10 or 15 years. So that's why you're seeing people just dropping from cancer, boom, bang, bang. And people need to understand, Le and this is a good question, LeBron James had a tumor removed from his jaw, okay, where he holds his cell phone, and that Israel's doing their own studies showing an increase in salivary gland tumors related to cell phones, and they're warning their population. People need to understand the Vice President Biden's son, who was only 46, died from a brain tumor behind his ear. Um, this is the most common place to develop a brain tumor from your cell phone. Um, and we, we have sources that believe that Bo Biden, Vice President Biden's son, believed it was his cell phone that caused his brain tumor. So we're talking about killing our most able-bodied people in the prime of their life and devastating their family. In the case of Bo Biden, he had children, surviving children and surviving wife, devastating children, families, communities, the whole country in the case of Bo Biden. So we are microwave poisoning our population and they're already getting sick and dying. So the 5G is just a more egregious affront and a more egregious violation of what is already a massive human violation. I imagine you're wondering, well, why aren't the environmental groups more, more aware of this? That is a big problem. The environmental groups have been sold on the idea that these wireless transmitters can be used to manage people's consumption and therefore uh, save the planet. And that's been an amazing sales job. Meanwhile, while it's microwave poisoning our population, they've sold them on the idea of managing consumption. And so they've stayed on the sidelines and that's unfortunate. Um, our doctors are ignorant of health effects. Um, even though the California Medical Association passed a resolution in 2014 um, stating the problem pretty clearly, um, in general, doctors are ignorant of health effects and they're taking the industry studies that are being given to them by their representatives and they're not looking carefully themselves. And they're, not, and they're unaware that people are coming in with symptoms of electrosensitivity that can be eliminated or reduced just by reducing exposure. And they're falsely medicating them and falsely giving them surgeries they don't need. Um, so it's a, a, a tremendous problem. And now, like the tobacco companies, um, the industry is focused on exposing our most vulnerable population, children and sick people. And so they're focused on the schools with Wi-Fi in the schools. And now they're putting intense wireless systems in our hospitals under the, under the guise of patient safety so they can manage the medical records of the patients more efficiently. But they're exposing already a vulnerable group that's sick to uh, technology that's going to make them sicker. Um, so that's absurd. And while in California the firefighters um, managed to get the fire stations exempt from a bill that was going to say you could put cell towers anywhere because they're, they're, they've long for decades known about health effects from wireless radiation because they're experts in health hazards. Um, they, had, they had exemptions put in these bills to keep these cell towers off fire stations. While they exempted fire stations, they're still putting cell towers on top of public hospitals in California. So while the firefighters need to be protected, our children and vulnerable elderly in hospitals don't? This is absurd. How, how polluted electronically is our environment? It's, you know, we're being exposed right now to waves that are billions of times more than we're, we're used to. And it depends on where you are and how close the transmitter is to you in terms of exposure. But the interesting thing is the National Toxicology Program study that came out just this year was a 16-year study, $25 million study, and people can find it by typing in cell phone dash national toxicology program. This was a $25 million study that was supposed to s distinctly settle the issue of whether wireless radiation can cause cancer. And what happened and what the authors were surprised to find was that yes, it found that wireless radiation can cause brain cancer and heart cancer but the most important thing, subthermally, below our thermal standard. Um, and the other thing is it showed DNA damage amongst the rats that were exposed whole body. 
Um, but the other important thing was it showed that the rats that were exposed more had more cancer. So that's very important as we layer more wireless transmitter and more wireless systems on top of each other that more really is worse, that it really does bang the cells up more um, and cause more problems. So we're already at a situation of unhealthy levels and now with 5G we're just going to make it much, much, much worse. And we're far from what's natural in our environment. And as you know about any kind of ecological system, um, you know, you, uh, species can adapt and we're amazingly adaptable, but not when you increase exposure so quickly. Not when you're hitting them with multiple sources. All these studies are done with one source. Now, no one is exposed to one source. Not when you're increasing the amount of frequency and the amount of waves per second as quickly as we're increasing them. You know, you can't expect, you know, the human species to adapt that fast. They simply don't. Um, so we are on a crash course um, for even more sickness and death. If you think we have a lot of cancer now, you haven't seen nothing yet. And I use that quote because Tom Wheeler the architect and the pusher of 5G from the FCC who used to be the CEO of the wireless trade organization he says you know if you think you know we have a lot of wireless technology now and innovation you haven't seen nothing yet well, I would say the same thing about biological effects you really haven't seen nothing yet and people really it's time to take a stand it's time to get off the sidelines it's time to protect your family